Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. Now a few months ago, uh, last year sometime, I reviewed this, the Zoe 702 uh, multimeter and oscilloscope and uh, I thought it was alright and for, for what you pay for these, uh, actually very very good indeed. Uh, and you've seen it on the channel whether you've realised or not because it's very handy to be able to have a scope trace sitting next to the um, the breadboard and you can just use one camera and you can see everything going on so I've used that a few times um, so I was very pleased when uh, Zotec asked me if I would uh, uh, review their new instrument which is the 703 uh, and what's nice about the 703 they're pretty identical in size by the way but the 703 not only is it a uh, two channel scope uh, but it's also got um, a bit of a signal generator as well so we've got multimeter two channel scope and signal generator all in one box. Now uh, Dave Jones, the EV blog, has done a review of this uh, as has Tony Albus so I'd encourage you to have a look at their videos, I'll put some links to them down in the description. Uh, Tony's got some really good test equipment so he's gone through and checked the, the accuracy and the calibration of things which I think is good. I don't want to repeat that but what I want to try and focus on is uh, if this is all you'd got could you actually practically use it with some circuits? So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so let's start by a quick look at and a com quick comparison of the two instruments on the bench. Okay, so here we've got uh, both instruments side by side. This is the 702 that you've seen before. This is a 703, and the I think the most obvious change is the slightly larger screen. Now, in terms of height, they're almost identical, and the, although it does look slightly wider, I think in reality the cases are absolutely identical. Uh, what is different, of course, is a much larger screen. Oh, I haven't peeled that off. I know that'll offend a few people, but hey, you know. Um, so the the screen, this screen on the 703 is about 10 millimeters wider, and it's about eight, seven or eight millimeters higher which doesn't sound a lot but it does look um, a lot nicer if I'm honest and you can see there are indeed um, two traces. So uh, popping from mode takes you to multimeter and you can see we've got um, additional counts on this one so we've got the extra digit. Um, I'll let you look at uh, Tony Albus's video if you want to see all the uh, checks with calibrations and things uh, but we've got that going on and mode will send you back to scope. I updated the software on this one, or the firmware sorry, which now means that whichever mode you switch off in is the mode that it restarts in. Initially that was just always starting in scope and if you wanted to use the meter you had to then press mode. Not a, a, an enormous problem but um, it's just nice for it to start in, in the mode it was last used. So um, I'm going to switch off um, the 702 and we'll concentrate on the, the 703. Um, so it's obviously a multimeter which is very handy because you've got everything you need there and you've got your various uh, settings run across here on the function keys uh, and you've got various other settings uh, across here that you can use I won't go through all of them but they're all there and then if we go back to mode we've got um, oscilloscope so uh, in the past on the 70 two we had just one BNC there uh, we've now got two um, so we've got channel one channel two so yellow and blue trace uh, the instrument itself comes with just one probe um, two would have been nice but you know what there's workarounds for that if you just want to you know try and run the cheapest possible electronics lab now both instruments on the right hand side have the USB charger and also that's access for doing things like updating firmware or getting um, images off but they've also got the two tags here um, ground and output and on the 702 that outputs the square wave for you to compensate your probe on this one it does the same job but it also um, gives you some uh, outputs of different frequencies so you can use this as a as a as a function generator if you want to now um, if we drop onto menu and keep going across we eventually come to uh, output setting there if we select that we can 
If we then choose that, we can step through uh, sine wave, triangle, square wave, um, pulses, uh, and you're back again to sine wave. And you can change the frequency here. Um, so you just down there to frequency. Now you've got not got infinitely variable frequency. You've got a few frequencies available. Um, you, if we step through it there, you can see the kind of things we've got. Um, that incidentally uh, uh, is always in kilohertz. And then um, we've got adjustment here for volts peak to peak. So if you select that, you can then choose 1 or 2.5 volts output. Um, and then duty cycle won't apply in uh, sine wave. But if we go to square wave, we should be able to... Um, Apologies, it's not that one, it's actually that one. That's it. That allows us then to adjust the that's the voltage, adjust the duty cycle. So you can step up there through the various duty cycle percentages. So it's actually uh, considering they're just making use of sort of the terminals here, it, it's not such a, um, a bad signal generator, really. It's actually um, uh, quite reasonable. Um, and I think the, the, the main point being that if you've got something you want to work on, and we are going to look at some circuits a little later on, but if you've got some circuits, you can measure voltages, currents, you can measure values of, of components, and then when you've done that, uh, you can actually, uh, if you want, if you need a signal to uh, put through your circuit to try it out, you can do that, and then you can obviously see the uh, the results on the on the two traces as well. So I think um, that's actually a genuinely useful tool. Um, right, let's um, uh, let's look at a couple of circuits and let's see the uh, 703 in action. Okay, we're going to use a 555 timer in astable mode. This is the circuit. I won't uh, spend too much time dwelling on it. Uh, but essentially the frequency and the duty cycle are controlled by the voltage dividers on the left and the 100 nanofarad capacitor, its charge rate. So we'll look at the output on the scope. We've got a trace, we'll look at the output and we'll use the blue trace to look at what's going on uh, with this, this capacitor. Right, let's hop straight to the bench and have a look at that circuit. Okay, so here we've got 555 just running there in astable mode. Um, as you've seen on the slides just now from the circuit diagram. And yellow trace is connected using the probe, the supplied probe, to um, pin 3. So we can see we've got the output there. Now, as I mentioned, it only comes with uh, one probe. So um, either get yourself another probe. But you can use just... A, I've got here a BNC cable with two crocodile clips on. I've not got this earth connected because I've already got it earthed here don't need two earths for this for the purposes of this but what I want to do is show you something that you can do with a two-channel scope so this is the output of the 555 but we know from previous videos it's being controlled by the charge and discharge of this capacitor here that's 100 nanofarads so I've got um, tr trace 2 whoops apologies it's timed out there I've got trace 2 attached um, which is the blue trace attached to this uh, uh, crocodile clip here so let's um, let's enable channel 2 and yes we've got a bit of ringing you can just see it there um, not surprising it's you know it's not in any stretch of the imagination a proper probe but if you just want to observe the fact that that triangular wave if you look closely isn't a triangle it actually has got a very slight curvature on it because that's the charge and the discharge cycle of that capacitor and we can also see there from a timing point of view that um, that's what controls the uh, frequency and duty cycle for that matter of the of the oscillations on the the 555 so we can see the relationship there between output square wave and uh, what's going on on the capacitor now they are of course um, on different voltage settings but we're not particularly concerned about that because we can see here that uh, it, it's the relationship between the two. Now okay if you want to take accurate measurements then yeah you need to get yourself another probe. 
So while we're here, if we just drop on, if, if we can move across now, uh, we've got the various settings here. You can see as we go across. So if I go to measure, and then I can choose my measurements. So I'm going to choose frequency, and I'll choose duty cycle. That's on channel one. If I went to there, I could do it on channel two. Let's just, um, well, it'll just confuse things if I do that. So we'll stick with channel one. Um, and we've now got little window appears there telling us 561.8 hertz frequency, blimey. And a duty cycle of just under 53%, something like that. So you can see it's um, uh, eminently usable. And the bit that I think is worth mentioning from, from my point of view, making YouTube videos, it's very handy to have all this in one camera view. Um, I don't need to um, have a camera on the scope or to be recording the scope screen. You can see everything here absolutely live. Now I think that's actually quite nice. Right, I've got a second circuit here where we can look at another aspect of, um, of this instrument. So I'll get set up for that and then I'll come back. Okay, just a quick description of the second circuit then. We're going to just use a couple of general purpose NPN transistors configured in um, common emitter configuration. Now this won't be remotely linear. Uh, but I'm not too concerned about um, about the amount of distortion you're likely to see. It's uh, uh, the use of the, the two traces on the scope is what uh, we're hopefully a little bit more interested in. Uh, on the breadboard it looks um, a little bit like that. Uh, it just uh, thrown this together as you can probably see and not even bothered to, to tidy up the, the leads on the resistors but uh, uh, we get the the result whatever uh, and what we're looking for here is uh, two stages of amplification so first transistor should uh, invert the phase by 180 degrees and the second transistor should put it back here yeah, so the output is in phase with the input right there we go that's the circuit let's go to the bench okay um, now I mentioned earlier on that the scope has a, a signal generator and it uses the um, terminals you'd normally calibrate your probe on and there's a, a range of um, signals you can get. So I've currently got it set out putting 5 kilohertz sine wave. Now again I'm using one probe that's on the yellow trace and I'm using uh, just this pair of clips with a BNC socket at the end for the blue trace. So there's going to be some noise that's not surprising but I'm just showing you you don't need to spend money on an extra probe you can get away with this unless you wanted to make precise measurements so what I've got here is I've got as you saw earlier in the, in the circuit description uh, common emitter amplifier um, two stages just got two general purpose transistors here and uh, two NPN general purpose transistors and I know for a fact that that this is not linear I'm going to be overdriving it I don't really care what the output looks like it's just an attempt to show you um, uh, what's going on with a with a two-stage common emitter amplifier so we've got the input signal here which which I'm showing you there and then I've got this trace of our, sorry this um, pin here so the first place I'm going to go to uh, is the input uh, which is just on that capacitor there and we should get pretty similar shaped um, waveform. You can see there's some noise on it. It's not surprising. I'm not using a proper probe. What would you expect? Uh, but you know it, it's good enough for what I want to show you here. So the next place I'm going to go to is I'm going to go to the collector of the first stage of the transistor, which is there. And yes, we've got a, a square wave. That's because it's um, uh, I'm driving this with about a volt, it's way too much, but for the purposes of today what I'm trying to show you here is that we've got inversion. Uh, the top of the waveform is now 180 degrees out of phase with the input waveform. So that feeds through that uh, one microfarad capacitor there to the base of the second transistor and we've got exactly the same thing going on at the base of the second transistor there. Um, I should really set that display so it stops timing out. Um, so you can see we're still 180 degrees out of phase. Now if I move on to the collector there, 
we've got a greater amplitude obviously because we are got another stage of application but now you can see that square wave is now back in phase with the input signal so base of that second stage we're 180 degrees out of phase collector we're 180 degrees in phase and if I can just uh, lower the sensitivity you can see there we are indeed back in phase you probably won't see it yeah there you go so that's the that's the base and then that's the next stage of application that's the collector so we've inverted it in the first stage and we've put it back so it's back in phase with the input signal for the out um out for the second stage of the common emitter amplifier and yeah you can see it's displaying it absolutely fine on this machine without um without too much problem at all. So yeah, two probes is nice, uh, would be nice, but you can actually get away with something a lot cruder. But I appreciate the purists are gonna tell me all the reasons um, that I've done things wrong here. Uh, but just to show you the setup, what we've got going on is I've got a couple of bulldog clips clipped to the output of the um, calibration probes, that's the output of the signal generator, and they're being fed into this red wire here and that yellow wire, uh, white wire is the ground. So I've got the signal generator coming in there, and then I've got the, um, obviously the probes as you've seen. So if we uh, now hop onto menu, and work our way across to output, we can adjust things here. So if we go up to five kilohertz there so if we select that we could change that to two kilohertz and then you can now see we've got uh, a lower frequency well hopefully you can we've got a longer a longer wavelength and we should still have exactly the same thing as going on so we've got 180 degrees inversion at the base of the second transistor uh, the collector of the second transistor we've got that um, wildly overdriven yes I know but uh, you know this isn't about hi-fi this is about just um, showing you what what you can do with a with a two channel scope and how useful that is so we've got the machine here measuring um, two channels and we've also got um, its signal generator in use as well so I reckon that's a bit of a lab um, in a box in one way because we're managing to use all the facilities in one go. I think that's pretty impressive Okay, well they have the uh, Zotec 703S two-channel scope meter and signal generator uh, I'm actually quite impressed with that and you're going to be seeing it featuring on the channel on videos because it's very handy to have a, a Scope sitting next to the breadboard so I expect to see it um, in future videos whatever they end up being I'm bound to need a couple of traces on the scope now I pre appreciate some people are going to say yeah well it's not that good you know and it says it's 50 megs but it's not etc if you're a hobbyist and you can really only afford a few bits of kit uh, this is potentially very very good indeed because that's actually providing you with multimeter facilities a bit of a signal generator and a two-channel scope and I think that's pretty remarkable now there are some sales links um, in the um, description as well I don't make anything from them but uh, I I'm actually quite impressed with this now if you've already got all these things and got a fancy scope maybe it's not uh, particularly useful addition but if you're beginning in electronics this would be a great thing to start off because it allows you to observe waveforms to, to be able to, to provide signals to pass through circuits that you've built and actually I think that's really really handy in one little box so yeah definitely worth checking out hope you found it useful we're back to electronics next time uh, so thanks very much for watching and see you on the next video